Hi guys, uh, I get a lot of questions um, about what kind of sword um, they want to use practicing Eido, and I hear some folks telling me uh, what grade steel it is and how much silicone is in the blade, and, and, and that makes me a little nervous. Because if you're a beginner at Eido, and if you buy a heavy steel sword, um, you're going to be fighting that sword to do proper technique. Um, I see this a lot. I see folks go on the internet on these auction sites and they'll spend $100 on a steel sword that's made in who knows where. And the problem I have with that is not only they're going to have poor technique and it could pull a muscle in their arm or the elbow, but um, the blades aren't fastened to the handles very well. So because of that, I don't allow them on the floor in the dojo because someone could get hurt, um, especially me because I'm the one standing in front of the people. <laughs> Um, so if you're hesitant on buying something on some auction site or some off-brand company, um, hold off on buying it. If it's under $200, it's, if it's under $300, it's probably not worth it. Um, stick with a Boken. This is very safe. It's, a, it's just a piece of wood shaped like a sword, and some of the nice ones are very, very light. Um, even some of the less expensive ones, like some of the red oak, I've seen the white oak can be a little heavier. Um, but they're still not nearly as, as heavy and off balance as a very cheap uh, steel metal um, you know, sword. Um, uh, getting back, getting to the metal swords is, I, I don't rec again, I don't recommend a steel sword. There have been in the past manufacturers that made quality steel Eito. Um, I don't really see them around much anymore. Uh, and if there are some out there, uh, let me know about them and I'm happy to look into them for you. Um, the big thing is lightness and balance points of the blades. Now, something like this, something like this here is a, is, is a, a moderately priced, cheapo eBay kind of thing. And when you pick one of these up, you already feel the weight of them is kind of impressive. And if you haven't held a light sword before, you may not know any better. You may think that this is how light the sword is supposed to be. But in fact, some of these are pretty heavy. And what happens is when you try to do proper technique, which means you're supposed to cut up really high and let the sword naturally just fall into place. You're going to be fighting it all the time. And you see my head jerk forward. That means there's a lot of tension and a lot of stress on your arms right about there. And you can feel that. And you can feel it in the elbow. And you can feel it in the wrist and forearm. And I've had students come into the dojo with, with, with a sword like this that's, you know, it's, it's pretty good. It's mounted well, but it's heavy. And they insist on using it. And I say, well, go in the corner over there. We're not going to hurt anybody. And then after a few weeks, they tell me that, you know, since my elbow hurts, my, my forearm hurts, I can't really pick anything up heavy. The reason is you bought a cheap instrument, and you don't want to do that. You can hear this thing rattling, too. Um, so what are you supposed to buy? Well, at this club, at our dojo here, we like Tozando. It's a company in Japan. I don't work for them. I'm not here to try and make you buy something through one of my links in the description. I'm just giving you the honest truth. Um, you know, I like Tozando. Everyone in our dojo has all bought their Eito from Tozando. They're not made of steel. They're made of like a zinc aluminum alloy. They're very, very light. You can even buy a light version of their swords, which is really nice. Um, and it just feels very natural. And what that teaches you is if you're not fighting a sword, you're going to learn how to use other muscles in your body that you're supposed to be using to do this to do this art, like your center and your legs and your and your back. If you're constantly fighting a sword with your shoulders and your arms, all you're going to do is do damage to yourself. So that's my recommendation, guys. Unless you're getting into a cutting art, where you want to cut targets and do tamashigiri and, and, and things of that nature, or if you want to cut, you know, fruit punch and bottles in your backyard, you know, that's that's up to you. But then you would need something steel and sharp. But these swords here are unsharpened um, alloy um, aluminum swords, and they're very, very safe. The mountings are very well done. Um, there's a variety of wraps you can get on them, but if you check out, I'll put their website in my description down below. I don't care if you buy anything through it. I'm not going to make a commission. That's not, that's not what we do here. Um, I just want to make sure everyone's safe out there, and you're not going to injure yourself, and then you can't train. And... That's no good. So those are my recommendations. Either stick with a wooden boken for a while and save you money and get yourself a, a decent EI toe from a reputable dealer like Tozando. And there are others out there. There are others out there that make really, really good stuff. But I've just been sticking with that one place for years. And I've never had a problem with them. So 
why should I change? So thanks for watching, guys. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and hit the like button. We appreciate it. And uh, stay safe. And thanks for watching.